Insects are small, and you, it's really hard to appreciate something you can't see. That's why it can be a hard sell to get people excited about insects. I've found in my work where I do a lot of outreach with people, if you can bring insects up to a scale where people can really appreciate what they do look like, it's pretty easy to get people captivated by bugs. My name is Jessica Ricken. I'm an entomologist. Entomology is the study of insects and often also includes um, other arthropods. So there's a huge amount of information included in these um, collections and it sort of drives home the point how important these collections are and that we preserve these specimens so that researchers can use them in the future. So there's a whole process we do with bees in particular because bees tend to be pretty hairy, especially bumblebees, and if you just took them out of the alcohol and dried them, the hair would mat down and not only would it be unattractive, um, it would also be, it also is really hard then to see what you need to see on the bee in order to identify it. I actually was not a big fan of bugs as a kid. I think the one that really turned, turned me into an entomologist was looking at a, a candy striped leaf hopper, which is this little, you know, if you look at it in your hand, it looks like nothing, but if you look at it under the scope, it's like got red and green stripes, these really vibrant colors, and it just looks like a jewel, really. And yeah, there's so much variety among the insects that it's, it, uh, it's enough to keep you busy for multiple lifetimes. Um, so the first thing is you, you take the bees out of the bags and I'm going to make sure that I also have the label because this label says when and where these bees were collected. Then I'm going to take um, just a mason jar, put the bees and the label into the mason jar. So I'm going to put a little hot wa warm water in there and uh, just a little squirt of Dawn. Then we have a little mosquito netting and the lid to this jar. And then I'm going to shake. So you can see the bees kind of swirling around here. Um, typically, we do this for about a minute. And it's amazing. People, the first time they do this, they say, wait, aren't, you gonna, aren't the legs all going to fall off? But these bees are amazingly resilient. So you can bang them around all you want, and um, not much seems to happen to them. So I kind of had this romantic idea that I would go to, you know, far-flung places and study animals of one kind or another, and I, I, didn't, I didn't know much more than that. So it just took a while for me to sort of figure out where I wanted to focus. I got a biology degree um, as an undergraduate, and then I went off to the Peace Corps for a couple of years. I was like, I want to study wild yaks or something like that. So I came back and I enrolled in the field naturalist program at the University of Vermont. And I took this um, invertebrate zoology class and that really opened me up to a whole new world. And then once a minute is up, you just pour that soupy water out and rinse. And then the next step in the bee salon here is to um, we're actually going to blow dry the bees to get the f to get them nice back to a nice fluffy condition. <laughs> Looks like we have a pretty good fluff. I started working in Denali doing a pollinator survey looking at bees and flower flies, two important pollinators in Alaska. Pollinators are very important to us, um, especially in agriculture. They, people estimate that one out of every three bites of food that you eat is brought to you by pollinators. Um, but they're also very important in natural wild landscapes, unmanaged landscapes. In order to get them under a scope and store them properly, we pin them. And we use insect pins that come in various sizes depending on how big your insect is. 
The pin goes in a particular place. It goes on the right side of the thorax, straight down. If you're really interested in biodiversity, that's, that's where the vast majority of biodiversity is, is among insects and other arthropods. These three and a half rows are all one species of bee, Bombus cryptarum. Let's see, what else do we have here? Mining bees, bees nest in the soil. Um, these tiny little bees here are called masked bees. They live in hollow twigs. Um, there's lots of information in there. I started looking at insects through the microscope. And once you've done that, bugs are just so, cool looking and I was so fascinated. That kind of drew me in and changed the direction of my career path, I think. Um, and I've been working with insects ever since.